Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. Welcome to my garden. This is a home garden field trial video. With the early frost that we encountered, that brought our season to a screeching halt here. So we harvested the remainder of what was in, in the trials, we tallied everything up, and we have our results for this year, specific to my garden. So in today's episode, we're going to recap a little bit about how we set up these trials, and what results we got, and where do we go from here. So if you remember, earlier in the season, we set up these beds by adding exactly the same uh, component materials to each of them. And then, based on viewer selection, we selected this is the rock dust bed, this is the control, and that is the biochar. So other than the addition of these different soil amendments, we did nothing different in them. And that's really to prove or to, prove or to test our hypothesis that adding these products will increase the plant health and hence the uh, amount of produce coming off of these beds. So we measured through the year the number of grams of produce coming off of these beds and we've tabulated it all today. And that's what we're going to go through now. All year we've been harvesting from the trials, weighing the produce in grams and noting down the totals. Today we'll share with you the final results from my garden and at the end we'll convert the grams to pounds for your reference. The kale and tomato results were published in the last trial update. Here is a final summary showing the control leading, followed by the biochar bed, and further behind the rock dust bed. Today, we finished harvesting peppers, carrots, and mango beets. The peppers were collected as they became ripe, and when the frost threatened, we collected the rest of them. The biochar peppers were not only the largest single pepper, at 120.5 grams, but the total weight and harvest of 16 peppers at 1,021 grams. The control offered 11 peppers at 895.5 grams, and the rock dust far behind with only 7 peppers at 533 grams. This brings our total yields to have the control in the lead with 6,721.5 grams, the biochar with 94% of the yield of the control at 6,368 grams, and the rock dust trailing at only 4,894 grams, or 72.8% of the yield when compared to the control. It was then time to harvest our root crops. The carrots were planted using strip tape as the seeds were extremely small. In order to standardize the results, the average number of carrots was calculated at 34, and the average weight in each trial bed was calculated. The corrected number was then added to the totals. In this case, the rock dust lead with 1,802 grams, followed by the control at 1,397.4 grams, and the biochar quite far behind at only 588.7 grams. The mango beets were harvested, and the greens and the roots were weighed. Much like the carrots, the rock dust led with 3,734 grams, but the biochar came in second with 2,944.5 grams, and the control trailed behind at only 1,922 grams. In retrospect, mango beets seem to have a higher variability in the size of the root and a lower number of beets. It makes it tough to say if the large root size in one bed is as a result of the additive or simply chance. The final Alberta Urban Garden Year 1 trial harvests are as follows. Rock dust with 103% of the harvest when compared to the control at 10,430 grams or 22.994 pounds. The biochar with 94% of the harvest when compared to the control at 9,900.7 grams or 21.82 pounds. The control with ended with 10,040.9 grams or 22.14 pounds. This year's results in my garden are inconclusive. Overall, the control had a much more stable harvest whereas the biochar and the rock dust had a variable harvest depending on crops. It is important to submit the results to both Patrick and I if you are participating in any of the trials. The combination of the results will help us weed out 
individual garden statistical anomalies, such as what I suspect is chance in the size difference between the mango beets. So with all those numbers tabulated, what does that really mean? It means the rock dust bed had 390 grams more than the control in produce collected. In pounds, that's 0.85 pounds. It's tiny. And the biochar bed had 140 grams less harvest, which is 0.3 pounds. So what does this mean for our hypothesis? Our hypothesis was that adding these soil amendments will increase the plant's yield. These numbers indicate we can't say they're not far enough to part, apart to say anything other than they're statistically the same. A little bit of minor variation here, minor variation there could end up inverting things, could end up equalizing things. It, you know, it's just not enough of a spread. So where do we go from here? Well, we're definitely going to move into a second and probably a third year of trial to see what these elements do over time. Maybe it just takes time to break down. Maybe it takes time to build up. We've, we're going to see. We're going to go into that second year. With that, we would absolutely love you to join us. So, I mean, feel free to give me, a me, me or One Year to Revolution a message and, and, and find out how you can participate in these trials. So to understand the results just a little bit better and maybe to get a better glimpse into why we really didn't see a marked increase, we're going we're gonna to move into some, some testing. So things like BRICS testing, which is a common way that on, on YouTube I've seen people try to measure the nutrient density of this root. Maybe it's may not increase the yield, but it, it makes it healthier. Or, uh, and we're going to go into a little bit more detail on the analysis. What, what we're actually going to do is take soil samples from these beds and submit them to an analytical lab and get some good results back, including things like pH, nutrient availability, total metals in there. And then we're also going to test the tissue for total metals just to see what's going on there, to see if we can further tease this, this trial apart and to get better value out of our, our first year of the trial and, and see where we land with these products to see if there's any difference, whether the statistical uh, equality of the produce is, is the statistical quality of the soil quality or the tissue quality or if there's some sort of difference in there. So stay tuned for future episodes in which we're going to start to address these issues and uh, present these results to you. If you have missed any of the trial videos and would like to catch up, please feel free to check out the trial playlist. If you'd like to discuss the trial results more, please feel free to join our Google Plus Home Garden Field Trial community. The URL can be found in the description below. Thank you for spending time with me today. I appreciate it very much, and I hope you have a fantastic day.